All we need to do is tap into it. Paul joins us now to explain. All we need to do is tap into it. Paul joins us now to explain. Good morning, Paul. Morning, Paul. Good to be here. It's not quite as odd as it sounds, is it? No, it is not. It's not odd at all. It's just that we often limit our view of reality to the point where we think it's odd. But if we understand more about what's going on, we can see these things are very, very real. It's, it, it, is synchronicity simply the same thing as, as coincidence? And what is it? Is it, is it science? Is it spirituality? Well, there's a great blend between the two. And as you asked your first question is, is it the same as, as synchronicity? Well, it's about meaningful coincidence. And a meaningful coincidence is something unusual that happens to two or more people, places or things that shows there's, there's a, a different level of connection, a different level of linkage than the usual way we see things happening around us. But I would imagine that most people, when thinking of coincidence, and we've all had, we've all, we've all experienced coincidences, but most people, I would imagine, would think that, well, that's just accidental. Well, the science supports that. Science supports that a lot of this is when people think they're, they're, they're friend they haven't contacted for a long time, they get in touch with them, or some, someone they haven't thought about for a long while, there's some contact made. Science shows that a lot of that is, in fact, an unconscious shared memory, yet there's still so much that happens that isn't an unconscious shared memory. And there's a lot of science to support the fact there is this way of getting beyond time and space, and that's very, very serious. Let's talk about the brain. We know so little about what the brain can do, but I was really amazed to read through some of the notes for this discussion, finding that there are receptors actually facing outwards. Yeah, there, there's a significant number of the receptors in our brain that are oriented outwards. And we would have thought that if the brain had evolved just to have the, the, the elements of the brain, the, the neurons just chattering chemically amongst themselves, they, they would be equally distributed like some magnificent Chinese puzzle. Mm. So why is it that a significant number are oriented outwards? That may not be some meaningful coincidence, but still, it's there. Why is the brain wired this way? Mm. And we also know that our mind can actually create subatomic particles, and subatomic particles are the substance of atoms, and atoms are the substrate of all the material universe. So our brain can create the substance that all matter is made out of. It's a powerful thing. So therefore it would suggest, particularly when you think about the, the receptors facing outward, it would ex suggest that we're not influencing synchronicity, it's influencing us. Well, it looks like, yeah, there are, there are several levels to us. We now know there are levels of connection. We're talking about connectivity here, David. It's the levels of connection we make to the world around us and then to the family around us. So we've got this physical connection. Now, we're seeing so much of those connections operating in the world today. One country has a meltdown in its economy, yeah. affects everybody. Yes. We see the global warming going on. Yeah. And that's now, it's not so much tide rising, that's about changes in pollination cycles and feeding the planet. That's all being or affected. Or could it be a wasp's wings or a butterfly? That's it, wings yeah. well, that's, that's that, extraordinary, isn't that's it? That's the classic chaos mm. theory, isn't it? it? And it, yeah. it's, it's remarkable how it's come to fruition now. And that's right. And so we're at, this, we're at this tipping point. We're either going to make a breakthrough or have a breakdown. We've got this whole global epidemic of mental depression. It's because, I believe, it's because we haven't made these higher links to ourselves. So we're feeling isolated and disempowered. But this other level of mind that's there, proof positive that it can function, we can be trained in it and can get access to that. Okay, so in a, in, if we can be trained in it, in a practical sense, what can it add to our lives? Well, the, the big thing is that we can then get to these creative levels of mind where we can actually have a choice over how we respond to all the issues and situations in our life rather than just blindly reacting out of habit. That once we awaken to these other levels, we, we, can, be, we can become more creative, we can become more adept at solving problems in our life rather than feeling completely disempowered mm. and useless. Mm. And another one uh, that, where this all often happens is between parents and children. They're able to tune into one another more. This, this synchronicity, this psychic component that now we know is alive and well in the world, mm. that's something that parents can tune into. So it, has, it affects us through our levels of creativity and also our levels of problem solving. So there's a wonderful platform of mind we can go to and we can be trained in this as long as we accept that it is possible to yes. get beyond it. And that's, that's probably the benchmark. Mm. People either say we can do it or it's all a load of, of rot. Yeah. And now we've got good science that proves we can skew time and space. I mean, if you look to the edge of our universe, this whole universe, as big as it is, we're in it, we're part of it. And this thing is accelerating which means we're stretching time and space. There's time and space we're in stretching. We now know that two particles, you know, quantum physics, they're getting yeah. too deep and yeah, meaningful. Yeah, yeah. We're made up of uh, quantum particles. So it, quantum physics is us. We are quantum physics at the basis of us. And we now know 
and that you can get two particles 30 kilometres or more apart and they can be so locked together that what happens in one happens in the other instantaneously. But so see, we're not surprised by that when we hear about those, and I have identical twins, mm. but we're not surprised when we hear about those amazing stories of identical yeah, yeah. twins separated. But That's what it. you're saying is that it's not just identical twins, that each of us is open to all of this. Absolutely. We, that, that's another. That's the level of our consciousness that we've dumbed ourselves down from mm. and that we can get access to it. Once we go past our, our scepticism or cynicism and then scepticism, we can maybe get access to this. And there's proof positive that it works because our brain can actually make these subatomic particles. And we now know through great quantum physics, something that affects all of us in our home today, that our attention, and this is ready to go woo-woo, we now know that our attention actually influences the very things we're paying attention to. So that you and I are all having an effect on one another, not only seeing ourselves across this time and space, but at another dimension, another level. Now, as I said earlier, our universe is stretching our time and space small quantum particles can actually be acting as though they've gone beyond time and space and we can do it with our brain, brain make an instant connection. Well, therefore, it's, therefore it's not utterly ran, random. Absolutely. Uh, so, could, therefore, could it be uh, mathematically predictable? Oh, yeah. It's, or manipulated. It, and it, uh, or it, manipulated. And in fact, it can be. It, in fact, can be trained in us. We can, we uh. can train ourselves in these, these sorts of things. And in, uh, I run a training program that shows how we can get to these levels. I can't guarantee the experience, but it can show the roadmap and the compass to see how we can get into these rather than drop into them just by chance, just un, under some chance moment. This, this is available to us, and we see this uh, is happening even with people like Beckham. You know, there's an example. Bend it like Beckham. He was able to read his environment in a way that he couldn't consciously understand, mm. but bring together all of the pressures of the wind and the movement of the team, and to the point where he would actually stretch, I was told, stretch the, the, the leather of the ball to a point where it would, the stretch would come out of it in air and give rise to that whole bend it yeah. like Beckham. Yeah. Ask him how he did it. He said, yeah, oh, no, just no, kick with, the football. Without, yeah. without understanding. Yeah. That's yeah. it. Yeah. You know, Deepak Chopra talks about uh, synchro uh, destiny, yeah, exactly. where, where the magic begins. Well, here, that, that actually exists right in this room where the magic mm. begins because a month ago, Deepak Chopra was to talk about synchronicity on this program. Yeah. And on that very day, he wasn't able to make it. On that very day, I attended his seminar, showed him a copy of my book, to which he said, Paul, you wrote this? I bought a copy of this in Johannesburg. It's a wonderful book. Here's my email address. Stay in touch with me. And what's happened now is I'm going to be on Deepak's program in America talking about synchronicity. So here we are. I'm taking the spot he had a month ago. Yeah. And we're we bring it up? It's a synchronous so moment about synchronicity. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, damn it, that could have been us. D oh, well, look, it's, not, it's not about TV programs, you see. What it's about, <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's about this, this alliance for yeah. a new humanity that he's mm. key to, and he's tuned into this connectivity, which is, a, as you said earlier, David, it's a spiritual thing as well, because spirituality is not about religion, not about beliefs, it's about healing connections. Mm. If we were to offer two words that would, be, that would show us a, a way of linking all religions, all faiths, it would be healing connections. New definition of spirituality. The capacity we have to heal broken parts into a, into a hole right. again and, and, and stop breaking away yeah. good connections. That's, that's an art form that we can develop. Well, I wanted to ask you what you understood by what he means when uh, synchro, destiny, synchro destiny is where the magic begins. What do you believe that magic is? I mean, how, how, how can we use this in a magical way? It's where we see ourselves not only separate from the things around us, it's when we tune into not only what we are apart from, but also tune into those other levels to see what we are a part of. It's the connections that are already existing and a part of them. Once we get tuned into that, suddenly rushing about becomes uh, healthy exercise and then uh, being stuck in a traffic jam becomes easy downtime. We just okay, don't so get worried about the small things. Yes. Okay, so, yeah. so in life, do we, do we ultimately end up where we we're always going to go? Um, and with that in mind, do we, do we take the, the twists and turns of life knowing that that's where we're going to end up anyway so that we can't actually make a bad decision because we're going to end up where we need to be anyway? We influence, we're part of the influences as if we have a slight hand on the tiller that we can control our destiny to some extent, that destiny will either unfold 
in spite of us or with us, but we can contribute to this evolutionary process because it's, it's not just us that's evolving this consciousness. We're talking about consciousness here, mm. whether we talk mm-hmm. about it from a spiritual angle or Deepak Chopra's healing, like this mind-body health. We're actually talking about an evolutionary angle. And it, it's consciousness that's evolving, and we, in, in fact, see it in animals. Mm. I mean, if we stay locked at the distances, we'll say animals aren't conscious. But we actually know now that animals are able to uh, reason abstractly. They can make abstract choices. Voices and the way they relate to their environment. We can actually see here this a is film fascinating, isn't it? Of, of a dolphin so in tune with its environment. What you're seeing there is a, an unbroken circle of air. And these dolphins, can playing you say it. that they're not conscious playing and playing? They're, they're producing this circle of air and they're playing with wow. it. Wow, wow. That's quite extraordinary, isn't it? Look at that, so for no other reason except just because it's yeah, fun. Yeah, just having fun and that they can do it. So Clearly these, more attuned to it than we are. Yes, great example, David, of how we can tune into our environment, get more plugged into the environment just as they are. Mm. Well, mind you, they're the only species in the world after humans that have sex for fun. <laughs> it's true. Good on them. Uh, yeah. Look, uh, just before we go, how can we tell how connected we are to our world? You have a, uh, an online quiz, don't you? Oh, yeah, there's, there's a, a global awareness quiz, and it's been designed uh, with a lot of uh, skill and efforts gone into getting this design right. And with these, they're called masked questions. We've got 10 questions online, and by doing those, you can, you can see what level of awareness, let's call it spiritual awareness, a level of, of conscious development you've achieved in your life. And remember, we change these horizons, and these are things we can be trained in ourselves. They're relevant to corporations. We run training programs for corporations to build teams that can be more cohesive. Mm. But the important point is, by doing the quiz, you will actually see a number of profiles. It'll show whether you're still at an infant level. And infants are good to be infant, and adolescents are good as adolescents. But when we as adults drop back to these stages, we probably know friends in our life that act a little bit childishly, but wouldn't be us, would it? But other people in their life, they'd do it. Did you point... No. no I'm just flicking no. some into, yeah. So that's so it. I was aware of it. I was aware of it. <laughs> that's it. He's tuned in. This we have man. an amazing connectivity, don't we, Big Dave? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Let's see it keep working for you. Yeah, no, it is. Well, fascinating to talk to you. Thank, you. thank you so much for your time. As Pleasure well. to be and here. Jump and online. Remember, yeah, jump online if you like some more details. Pay attention too. to your attention and stay connected. All right. Thank you.